Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We are your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their art. I'm Devani. And I'm Leora. And our guest today is Ali Schuyler. She is a playwright, author, personal growth blogger and blogger with an extensive and varied background in performance, production, composition, and music. Ali is currently working with a professional team to bring her musical dramedy to the stage soon. Welcome, Ali. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. We're really looking forward. We talked a little bit before we started recording on how we need to catch up on all the things that you're doing because (laughs) you have had such a varied background in stage performance and uh, writing and composition and musicals, etc. And more recently, your dream of bringing, uh, it was a musical comedy that you were working on a couple years ago, and you are finally bringing it to stage. So tell us, let's just start there. I know it's not your origin story, and that's normally where we like to start, but let's start with just a little bit about your play and what's going on with that. Well, it's called Life Sucks, just kidding. (laughs) And it actually all started about 10 years ago. I realized that 10 years ago was when I wrote my book. It's a group of essays different comedic essays on uh, things that kind of suck in life. And that uh, I was realizing that through ranting and raving about these quote unquote sucky things, it was allowing me to get to a better place and find more blessings and find more information into why these things are happening and what I can learn from them and what I can, what I can do as a person to evolve into a, the next step of who I am through these experiences. So that's where it kind of started was my book. Then I started a blog. Um, Then I wrote a course, a seven-week course called Transforming Ah Crap into a Holy Shift. And, um, you know, then after that, I've always wanted, I mean, I started out as a a musician. I was a French horn player at at performing arts high school. And then my husband and I, we got together. We did children's theater for 18 years. So I wrote all the music. I wrote the story. I wrote the show. My dream was basically to, I wanted to write for Sesame Street. That was one of the things I wanted to do. And then um, we had children and we started our own business, kind of doing this children's theater and between kids and, and just doing all my personal growth work. I got a little off track from what I really loved to do, which was writing musical. And I was also very involved in my kids' careers. My daughter's a musical theater performer, brilliant singer, actress, dancer, who's making her way right now and hopefully on Broadway one day soon. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, so once I think things settled a little with my children where they were a little bit more on their own, um, you know, late teens, early twenties, I had a little bit more time to go back and just think about what I really wanted to do, what really made me happy. And that was writing, writing this musical. And the musical ended up being based on my life and uh, which is, which is so interesting because they always say that write about what you know best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I ended up writing this story um, because I think it's so important nowadays that women, especially women my age, you know, we get to this point where balance is challenging. You know, how do you balance working, uh, taking care of your family, and also then, you know, pursuing your passion, pursuing your purpose. Right. And that's what this story is all about. It's about a woman in her, um, in her 40s who is on the verge of an existential suburban breakdown, uh, goes to a personal growth retreat, comes back and decides to quit her job and write a musical. <laughs> so creates incredible mishap and craziness in her family. Everybody's kind of, what's mom doing? She's not the same person we should do. She wasn't. She's not there. We need her. And she's not this and that. And she just stays really committed and driven to writing this musical Um, A little much more to the point where she's a little too unbalanced, where she hasn't really, she's so focused on it and driven by creating this that then she loses sight of where she really is losing some of the connections from her family that are also as important to her. So this show just came at a time when it was really very relevant to my life. And I, the more I talk to other women and I blog and I hear what people have to say, 
the more I'm noticing more and more that women in their 40s and 50s are really having a similar challenge. So um, I just felt it was a great, it was a great story to tell and to share and to um, hopefully inspire other people to step up and not so much just pursue their dreams, but learn how to find balance. Yeah. I think balance is a real key, key point in this show, as well as the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. You're, we all have dreams. We all have things that we want to do. And it's never too late. Mm -hmm. And that we can each support each other uh, in those dreams by adjusting our lives a little bit so that we can all, as a collective, work together to kind of, you know, kind of flow and soar and, and do what makes our hearts sing. Definitely. I think that's really important, too, because you're also speaking, especially to a demographic that a lot of the current um, market mass media is sort of leaving in the dust, so to say, um, because so there's always this focus of like the new generation, the young people, the, their opportunities, their thing, their moment, you know, their minute of fame, their whatever. And so there's a lot of struggles uh, in the older generations that there's not there's not like a mass platform where those those issues or those struggles are being talked about so having your own experience through that and your own growth and your own creative journey being going through being a young woman with dreams through being a mom and then being older and then still having those dreams and now having the opportunity to pursue them is definitely i think a narrative that so many women of any generation, but especially in your generation can yeah. relate to. Yeah, and for those who aren't, um, who aren't seeing the video, so you're, gener you're baby, like me, baby boomer generation, yeah. right? Yeah, so, born yeah. Hmm? Born in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, born in the 60s, okay. And so, yeah, so it's, but it's a really good point. So if you could enunciate um, or articulate the defining theme that you just described, you know, what would that be? What, how would that be stated? The conflict between, for instance. Ask me the question again. Okay, sure. So I didn't do, I didn't do a great job of making no, that okay. clear. Yeah, I just need a little more clarity. Sure. So, so when you were talking about the conflict and the struggle, right, uh, and that that is what, what inspired you to write, you know, and, and a lot of it was paralleling your own life. And it seems to me that you're, you could say that, it's about the struggle between two loves, the love of your family and the love of a career and a creative career that also feeds your soul. So how would you describe though, the defining you know, slogan or, or statement about the, the play? Suck you to, uh, so, sorry, not suck you to soulful, but um, life sucks, just yes, kidding. Just kidding. Um, I think you just said it beautifully. It's really about, it's really about balancing two loves. You know, I'm incredibly committed to my children and there's been many a times where I choose them over my, my path, my purpose, my career, because I also feel like they are my path and my purpose in my career in lots of ways. So there's times where you have to make those choices. And I think one of the things that I hope people get from this show when they see it is that we all need to make changes to support each other in our path. Mm -hmm. We all need to make changes. Right. Not just like... Julie was going off and just didn't discuss it with her husband, didn't check in with him and just decided to quit her job and write a musical, which freaked him out. He's like, wait a second, we have another kid going to college and you know, how are we going to afford all this? And um, he wasn't, she didn't, she didn't help support him to support her. Same thing with the kids. Mom, where's dinner? You, you make dinner every night. This, go get peanut butter and jelly and a pickle. I don't care. You know, there was no... There was no, um, on her end, there was no real understanding that in order, when one person in the family makes a big change, it affects everybody else in the family. And that there needs to be a consciousness about how can you bring everybody along in that journey, just the way there is in a, in a husband-wife relationship. You know, but then you've got more people. You've got a whole family unit you're dealing with here. You know, you need to sit down, have a conversation, explain what's going to be happening, talk about the different ways that you can each support each other, explain how this is important to you and you asking their kids to step up now and ways in which you're asking them to maybe take care of themselves so that you can have some more time to do what you want to do. So this is what Julie didn't do. She was just so, you know, driven and excited about finally being able to pursue her dream. 
that she really forgot about that end. And the, the beautiful moment in the, in the show that I love is there's a character in the show called Poppy. He's her dad. And he's kind of the wise and comical relief in this family dynamic. He always has a funny line from a musical theater show to sing. He's very uplifting. He loves everybody. Um, you know, within the storm of the family dynamics, he's the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. And he sings her this beautiful song called Guide Them. And he talks to her about the fact that, you know, he brings up this point exactly. You know, you didn't really prepare anybody for this huge change. So you can't really get pissed off at them when they're expecting you to be the same person you've been for the last 25 years. Mm. So she, at that point, isn't really able to hear him. Mm. But later in the show, through one of her characters, and this character uh, that kind of goes rogue on her and kind of switches the whole plot of the musical that Julie is writing, Julie starts to see that she's behaving in the same way that her character is wow. and starts to hear you know, what Poppy was trying to share with her. So I, I would really say again, that it, the, the show for me is about balance and it's about, um, it's about all of us finding balance and it's about all of us understanding that when you're in a family, it, every single person has a role in contributing to that large picture. Yeah. It's not just the mom and the dad, right. you know, it's the kids too, that, that we all, you know, or just the mom or just the dad or just the grandpa. It, it, it's, everybody has a part in supporting each other. And, and that's what I hope people will get to from this uh, show. Of course, it is a happy ending. Um, you know, people step up in different ways. They're not used to stepping up. And, and Julie gets to write her musical and finally gets the support of her family as she's finishing it up. So um, that's really what I hope to convey to people is that, that I think balance is really the key word. Definitely wonderful. That's such a beautiful portrayal of real life, too, because uh, so often we don't uh, we we don't always understand the ways we need to step up until it's facing us like mm. right there and until we have to make that decision of how am I going to step up how am I going to show up whether it's to the world whether it's through your creative endeavor to your family to whoever and whenever we have these moments of like decision of how am I going to step up to the plate right now and be a contributing member without creating creating enough ripple to have an impact, but not creating so much ripple that everyone's like, oh, what's going on? Where's this boat going? <laughs> Who's driving? Well, you know, too, when you're in a family and you have one kid that's having issues, you know, or having difficulties, everybody's affected by it. Right, absolutely. Everybody's affected by it. You know, if I have to manage my, my one of my children, the other kid has to suffer because I'm over here dealing with crises all the time or right. I can't really pay attention to that to that other person or I don't have time to to make the dinner that night because I'm running to the doctor or dealing with an emergency. Right. So, you know, I think that's one of the things that I, I have issues with most people is that I don't think people really realize how, how connected we are. You know, even when you're walking down the street and there's somebody else walking down the street, you know, there's a, you know, like I notice when I'm walking with my dog and somebody else is walking with their dog, you know, you have to be aware of the dynamics of the two dogs and where you're mm -hmm. walking, you know, there's, there's a consciousness that I think, it's important for all of us to have uh, with everybody on the planet. Yeah, it's like um, staging in life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, staging needs to happen in life too, in a way. So, yeah. um, so how did you go from, you know, there were so many other things that you were working on. You were working on building your brand. You were working on right. raising two young adults and supporting your husband and his creative endeavors and your yeah. joint ventures. Um, yeah. So a couple of years ago, you picked your musical back up and started working on it again, right? Is that about the timeline? Actually, we were, yeah, it was about three and a half. It's almost three and a half years now I started working on it. Um, I got an idea because my daughter and her friend who are, her performers um, started telling me a story about their life. And then I thought, oh man, that would be such a great, great show. And that's kind of when it started. And I just, you know, I wrote it little bits by little bits, came up with ideas. But as I was writing it, I realized this is what I want to be doing right now. This is what I want to do as much as I love. And I can bring all of my personal growth work into this show, which is great because the main character, Julie, is always writing shiftitudes. And shiftitudes are the acronyms that I've written. I have a little book called Shiftitudes, which is all acronyms that help people get to a better place. Right. Um, words that you can use like uh, bless, bestow love every single second, yeah. you know. And you're so good at that. Yeah. yeah and I love it. I mean, I, they just come to me. I've written like, I don't know, over a hundred something shiftitudes. So I incorporated that into the show. 
Nice. And there's information that Julie conveys to her kids. That is stuff that I use in my blog. There's information that Poppy uses with Julie that I've talked about in my personal growth course. So I'm bringing it all there. And I'm hoping that after the show, I can sell my course, sell my Siftitude book. I can, I have, you know, I have product that I can then share with people when they leave so they can continue, continue the consciousness, continue the, the thoughts that I've shared in the show in an entertaining you know, in right. any way. Well, I yeah. have no doubt that you'll be successful because, <laughs> because you keep working on the same concept year after year after year. And yeah. you, you know, you keep building it. So you may be building, you know, a larger structure, essentially, you know, one brick at a time, you keep adding bricks, it's going to become a structure, you know, that will support and, and can be, you know, seen and recognized for the beauty. So I think that it's inevitable. And whether or not it's is, you know, it's not easy, but inevitable. So speaking about not easy, you know, you've had some ups and downs relative to hoping that, you know, somebody might pick up your play and do it for you. Um, and that, so if you'd like to share any of, any of those experiences or that experience and how it is that you got to where you are now of bringing it to the stage. Well, I think my biggest struggle is that I do everything on my own and I don't have enough cash flow to hire people to do the jobs. Um, luckily, I'm able to do a lot of these different jobs, whether it's promo, finances, uh, setting up sound people, getting learning sound systems so I can hire people and teaching them, um, dealing with uh, promo sales letters, press releases, and also the creative aspect, because I'm doing all three things. I'm writing, I've written the book, which is the storyline. I've written the music, I've written the lyrics. So usually musicals, you have two or three people doing all of those different jobs. So I am doing a lot of work that um, I enjoy and I, I really love being involved in all these different things. I just find sometimes it's a lot with also managing my family and all the other responsibilities that come with quote unquote life. So that's been my biggest struggle is just not having the cash flow to hire enough people to help me. Yeah. Well, did you seek out any sponsors or? Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I send my work to producers. I send it to festivals. I'm just, you know, we're going to do a sizzle reel of the show, which I'll send out to people. And one of the things that, you know, because Jamie and I are so into doing self, you know, entrepreneurs and creating your own business is that what I want to do with the show is because it has such a personal growth element is I want to book it at different personal growth retreats, conferences, cruises, not necessarily, you know, I'm not just going for Broadway, um, which I would love to be at, off-Broadway or Broadway, but I'm just trying to find other markets where I can sell this show where it has some value so I can open up the extent to which I can create sales for it. So I'm hoping to do like, you know, the Louise Hay cruises or the, you know, the Omega for a weekend or um, any of these places where Abraham Hicks, they do great cruises. I've always wanted to be on one of their cruises. So I'm hoping they might yeah. <laughs> book the show. So as an entertainment piece for people, you know, if you wait for three days, Friday night or Saturday night, you see a show, yeah. um, which has to deal with a lot of the, you know, personal growth, change your thinking, change your life, you know, um, words, thoughts that you use, create your reality. All these themes are within the show. So that's what I'm, that's where I'm hoping to help get it out there more on a bigger mm -hmm. scale. You might even look into um, like Google, um, Amazon, Facebook, huge, you know, gargantuan corporations that have a tr pour a tremendous amount into um, helping to make their employees' lives better. Um, oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Incorporation. So then oh, you just thank you. Yeah, okay. You the self development. I have that down. Because it's far more entertaining to watch an entertaining show about the topic as a, with a story that's probably relatable to many people. And I mean, then to listen to a speech about the same thing. I yeah. mean, of course there's very entertaining speakers, no doubt, and not bashing that market at all. But if you have to choose between the two, it's like, well, if this show delivers the same message, why not? <laughs> yes, entertain. I mean, that's how we learn stories down mm -hmm. the ages, right? And so, you know, tie that, like your books, Sucky the Soulful kind of, uh, and your um, shiftitudes seems to me like they would be perfect for corporations like that to order in mass. 
large quantities and distribute to employees. As oh, God, well, that would be amazing. I would love that. Yeah, so as well cool. as, in, I mean, totally. It's just a matter of, you know, it's kind of like um, looking for the right, you know, the soulmate kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> you know, finding the right match, you know, it's there. It's just a matter of finding it can be the hard thing. Yes, um, well, that's again a struggle, uh, you yeah. know, just finding the time because when you're the creative person, you know, this is the biggest challenge I think for creatives is you need to make time every day to be creative. Yes. You need to. It's just, you, that's what you need to do. And then you also have to be able to do the business end of it. And I think a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people have trouble with that business end of it. Absolutely. Now, I don't, I'm lucky I'm able to do both as yes. Jamie is, but again, it's about time and it's about having, you know, people power to help you get the word out there and make all these connections. And right. Them. There's only you know, just putting a flyer together or brochure together is, is time consuming. Yeah. You know, there's so many little details that go into it, you know, making it a PDF or a word, and then you have to transfer over to make it a JPEG. So if it's on your email, cause you can't yeah. put a PDF on your email, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. or right. finding a, finding an email server like a Weber or chimp or other and learning their whole process and how they put it all together. Yeah. There's, there's time and energy that goes into every step of the way. That's which right. I find exciting and I like learning, but I do, you know, there's just, I could definitely use 10 more people. <laughs> I, I, it reminds me of, I heard recently a podcast episode but, um, with Michelle Curry. She's, we interviewed her in a previous episode, so we'll link to that. But she uh, interviews creatives and performers in particular because that's her background. And she yeah. was interviewing a lady who is an actor and who did a one woman show that, but she played like 13 different characters or something. I forget mm -hmm. the exact number. Um, and so this, it, you know, certainly all that you're doing now, who knows, your next play might be a one woman mm -hmm. show that's about all those different hats because, I mean. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, I have all these ideas for all, I mean, what I'd really love to do is I'd love to create a development company because I have all these ideas for creating all these different musicals and plays. And I was actually writing a play a day on Facebook just to keep my juices going. And every day I'd wake up in 10 minutes before I started producing this, 10 minutes I would sit there, I'd write a play. It, it was usually a page or two pages, very short. And I posted on Facebook. And then what happened was I had so many cool little ones I actually made a 10 minute play out of the whole, you know, out of each day's play. But, but that kind of stuff where I have all these ideas and they're always coming yeah. and, and, and I don't have a place to always put them. Right. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I miss. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but you know, 90% of my time is business and 10% is creative. But I find in general, you usually have to do your creative stuff first yeah. or you will always, you know, oh yeah, I'll finish this first. I got to do the insurance. I got to take care of this. I got to, you know, pay okay. the bill. And then I'll get, and then by the time you get to it, it's 10 o'clock at night. You're so freaking tired. You know, you don't have the juices. So I've been learning that if I'm going to be creative, it's the first thing I do. Okay, good. The first thing I do. Um, so then, one of the questions which is, one. which has been very hard for me with the kids, but once the kids have gotten older, and I've had a little bit more time to myself. I can manage my time better because I don't have the kids in the house anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but when they were here, it was, that wasn't always easy to do. Um, but I would definitely say that if you can, that doing the creative stuff first is, I, for me at least, at least I know I get the creative stuff done. Otherwise, sometimes I lose it. So you were writing um, a short play for each day on Facebook, posting on Facebook. What is generally your daily creative habit? Uh, that was a habit I was doing. I don't have, I don't have a general creative habit. I would say that's something that I was doing actually, because I was realizing that I wasn't being creative enough. That's so true. when I have a goal or I have a place I can put something and I know somebody has to see it, then that is, inspires me more to write it. So right. if I know I have to post something then like a blog post or, and the blogs kind of waylaid the last couple of years because I've been spending so much time on this project. But if I know I have a blog post or I have to write something for someone else to read, then that gets me more disciplined to be creative. Sure. So having a purpose for what you're creating, um, yeah. it sounds like. So have you taken your, um, so if you have, I don't think you have taken your Facebook post, your little plays and put them on YouTube yet. Have you? No, no, I actually have been just submitting them right now to different 10 minute short uh, they are called 10 minute play festivals. So I've been submitting it there, here and there, but on YouTube, I haven't done that because they're, they're not live. They're written piece. So you're saying as a written piece, you can put that up on YouTube too. No, I was thinking that you could perform it or read it. Oh. Um, so, so for instance, you know, like one of your descriptors is blogger vlogger. 
Yeah. So you could read it as like a blog um, or act it out um, on video. So yeah. it could be like podcast style audio only. And then you would post, you could post it on your website with a link and share that on Facebook. Um, oh, that's or, another good idea. Yeah. And, and you know, I the, love that, but you're always coming up with great ideas. Yeah. It's, it's like you, you always. know, you always have ideas for new stories, new plays, et cetera. And mine is that way for business and creativity as well. And, you know, and it's one, some of the things that we, we enjoy and do a lot of. Yeah. Both of you. I know. you. But, but the thing is what, what's really critical is uh, getting it out there and not waiting on some forum or some festival to choose you but to right. put yourself out there. So, yeah. you know, to just keep no, you know, you can submit it, yes, but then you submit it yourself direct to your potential audience on YouTube. So you've got it on Facebook. You could do Facebook Live videos as well, and they get a lot more reach and begin to get feedback from people who, you know, you will attract more and more people who are entertained by them and you'll get, that'll give you direct, uh, direct audience feedback, something you won't get if you're waiting for a festival platform of some kind to exactly. say you won, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, Cause they probably look at, uh, like I know book publishers look at people's social and online presence as one of the determining factors of, are they like worth publishing or whatever? Cause they want to make sure you have an audience to come with you. And so I'm sure some of these festivals are probably looking at that as well in terms of does this producer, does this person, whoever is yeah. submitting stuff, do they also have an audience? Because then it's advantageous to their festival because when you share that you're there, you're also sharing that I'm at this festival, which is their marketing too. So yeah, yeah, no, very good points. Both of them. Got yeah. Him. Got him. So yeah, so do so think about what you can do and just get it started. And, and I think that, you know, one of the things that you keep doing is you persevering around this one theme that's essentially, it seems like, you know, your life purpose work or your soul work, because it's been so much about your journey for yeah. the past number of years. And so you just keep putting it out there. And you know, the, the inevitable thing is that it has to grow. You can't just keep putting another brick in the wall and not have it grow. It's inevitable. So you just create, you know, keep putting your body of work out there because how can you not, you know, how can you not create? You can't not create, you are a creator. And so now just keep putting it out there and don't wait um, for it to be a, the perfect venue or the perfect, you know, arrival. So yeah, definitely keep us posted on how that goes. And, um, and we'll definitely share, you know, some of the things that you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So um, one of the things we, what, what else do we have here, Devani? Uh, okay. So you, you've established that you're not yet making a living as a full-time creator, but that would be an aspiration. So right, but you know, the, the beautiful thing about this, we're interviewing people who are either already making a living and supporting themselves from their art or even just beginning and everyone in between, you know, and so that's perfect and beautiful that you shared, you know, your authentic struggles about having to do everything because there's not enough resources to hire someone because so many creatives can relate to that. Um, but I think it's all. important too that, even despite not having the 10 person dream team that you want, you're doing it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of creators especially get stuck in this place of I'm just the artist. I can't do any of that because all I do is the art and all this other stuff. It's not fun. It's very technical. It's, exactly. it's not artistic. It's not, you know, whatever the story is, which is really ultimately this excuse of just not, sitting down and doing it because because anybody can figure anything tactical out it's much and this is what i think is interesting for many artists to consider it's much you can't google how do i magically create or get inspiration to make an art like it's much more taxing mentally to actually create the art they're creating than it is to sit down and watch a tutorial on how to do something well, That's unless you're, if you're not technical, it can feel, and you're very much a creator, it can feel a lot easier just to sit down and write something and create an article than to sit down and try and absorb technical information. It can, so, but there's a one, two, three step on how to do it. Rarely is there a one, two, three yeah. step on creating. creating a wonderful masterpiece. Like there isn't uh, this one way because there's so many ways to do it. And so I think part of it is just sitting down and deciding like, 
what today I'm going to wear the learner hat yeah. and I'm going to decide to tackle this one thing that I've been struggling on because eventually you'll have that 10 person team, but you can't get there by constantly uh, avoiding doing that. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. I think too, I think it depends on the person you are. Like I'm lucky. I, 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 I have a lot of skills. So I've been able to really be my own 10 person dream team. <laughs> I can, you know, um, I'm really creative and, and, and good at business and I'm, I'm a good multitasker. Um, so, but it, it's tiring, but I will say that I've noticed that, um, there are a lot of different brains out there and, <laughs> you know, I'm lucky I can use both sides, but some people just don't really have that capacity that doesn't mean that they can't learn and they can't do what you said which is just sit down and try but i think you also have to know yourself well enough to know yeah this is not something that i can do mm -hmm. i cannot do this business end of it so it's really important to know that you can't and to go find somebody that can yeah so like if you don't have the wherewithal you go out and you find somebody that can help you whether it's your mother <laughs> yeah whether it's uh you barter with somebody whether you go and use Fiverr, whether you, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's, I think it's really important to know yourself too, to know if you have that business acuity or if you don't. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't, you have to be just as good at finding people to support you as I am able to do it for myself. Yeah. yeah. And realizing that money isn't the only value exchange. So if you can't pay somebody monetarily, there are other things, there are other wants that people might have. And if you can figure that out and build a relationship with someone and be like, okay, what is it that I can do of equal value so that you can do this thing that I hate doing and I don't want to do? Yeah. Right. My point being that I think you need to know yourself well enough to know if you can do the business stuff or not. Or yeah. Or the capability to. Some people are just afraid or they're, they, you know, oh, I can't do it. And they don't put the energy and drive in, even though they maybe can do it. But then yeah. there's other people that really can't do that part. Right. I really believe that. I think that we all have different skills and talents. And, you know, it's like the school system expecting us to be A's in every course that we take. It's, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Right. It's not, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, like figure out, I think it's real important to know who you are and to know what your talents are and know where your strengths are and know where your weaknesses are. And then if you know those are weaknesses, find other people that can help support you Definitely. and balance out your strengths. Yeah, absolutely. So That's um, really and, and then you earn some your money doing something that you know. Mm -hmm. And then you can take yeah. you could even say like if you're a visual artist and you create a painting, you could even in your mind dedicate, I'm going to make this painting over this next 3 hours and I'm going to sell that and with that money pay someone to do a website for me, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think that's really important. So um yeah. Yeah, one of the things I, I think we missed and would like I would like to come back to is how it is you got to the place of bringing your production to the stage. So oh how you... oh, oh well, I've always had intentions to, yeah. um, and there's a process that you go through with musicals. Basically, the first step is after you've written everything, you do something called a reading, where you bring actors in and you read through the script. So as a writer, I get the opportunity to hear it because reading it is very different than hearing it and seeing yeah. it. Yeah. And once you do the reading after that, then you can do something, you can do a workshop, which is where you have a couple of weeks where you, you know, you teach actors, uh, they have a book, they'll, they'll read from the script and they'll sing the songs, or you'll have a stage reading where they'll read this script and then maybe you'll play the songs. But you have now you have a second opportunity to um, see your show come to life a little bit more. And then after that, hopefully you get to do a, a showcase or you a place where you can invite in, you know, professionals down to come see it. So hopefully somebody will then take it and put it in the theater. Like right now, I'd love to have the show done at one of the New Jersey regional theaters. And last November, I did a um, stage reading at the Women's Theater Company. And uh, Barbara Krukowski, who's the artistic director here, has kind of been like a mentor for me since the beginning. I invited her to come to the stage reading I had at my house for three days. And then after that, six months later, she did a reading at her, at her theater, which was where we really got to see actors acting it and putting it out there. I've made a lot of edits. I've changed a lot of the story over the last three years. I've kept the essence of it, but um, it, it's now a very different show than it started out as, which is what happens when you mm -hmm. go through this process. Yeah. You see it. It's part of the writing process. And that's the biggest, biggest, hang on a second. Zeus! No, 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 no. Sorry, he's eating a plant. Come here. Don't do that. That's not good for you. Come on. He's looking at me like, what? what? 
<laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? It's, it's, it's hanging here. I can eat my plant. Um, so, um, you know, like one of my, one of the things that I've loved is to have this performed at one of the New Jersey regional theaters as a performance, a full performance. Yeah. So we have staging, we have lights, we have, you know, I have music, I have the whole, see it as a show. Mm. Um, so that's the step after the showcase that I'm doing on uh, March 4th, which is where, you know, you really want to get it into a theater so you can perform it six or seven times and then you can really feel it and you can see it. And it, it's, it's a living, breathing thing that doesn't really come to life until you bring an audience in. Yeah. Once you bring an audience in, then you really see what works, what doesn't work. Um, luckily at the reading I just did at the Women's Theater Company, um, you know, everything landed where I hoped it would, which was very exciting. So yeah. that's always a great feeling. Um, but now the next step is to do the showcase where, you know, the actors are going to be there. I'll have music. They'll be singing. I'm going to have an audience of hopefully 160 people. But again, it's just one show. Yeah. So it's not like I have a run where I can really run through the whole process. So, um, and luckily, like I said, Barbara at the Women's Theater Company has been a great mentor to me. She's come to the reading. She sits down and talks to me about ideas, what works, what may not work here and there. Um, she's been lovely and wonderful. So uh, I'm very lucky I've had her. You know, especially being new to the New Jersey theater community, mm -hmm. somebody like that, you know, um, supporting you has been great too. I had, oh, go go ahead. Um, I had a question about the the show itself. You mentioned that it sort of was inspired by stories that your daughter and her friend were telling about their various adventures, and but you also mentioned that it's about this balancing act of this woman, Julie, the character, and her balancing her family life and her career slash passion life and, and figuring that out. When was it immediately apparent when you were writing it that you were writing about a struggle that you were experiencing or had gone through or were going through? Or did it take a while for you to realize, oh, wow, I'm also telling my story and so many people can relate. When in the process did you realize? Well, it started out being more about, it was called the understudies originally, which we, Leora and I, when we did our interview, was about these young people. This woman's writing a musical about these young people who uh, become understudies and get so frustrated that they don't get, um, that they don't get parts, kidnap their leads mm -hmm. in order to try to blackmail them into letting them have a weekend where they can do the show too. That's how it originally started. And I got a lot of comments that, you know, it wasn't totally working. And I had, I had a huge cast. I had like 15 people. And my daughter actually said, you know what, Mom? It would be better if this story was about you. I really enjoy the parts where the family are interacting. And this is really your story. So uh, my husband had said that. My arranger, too, felt it wasn't totally working. So I had to sit back. And I had to really take a hard look at it. And it was very painful because <laughs> when you spend two years writing something and you're invested in the storyline to change such a big part of it yeah. it was very hard and then Jamie actually said you know what you should call this life sucks just kidding based on your book and when he said that to me that's when I realized that's when the shift happened and I was able to start writing more about from my perspective mm. and what happens is Julie is having these conversations with her daughter who calls about her life as a musical theater performer. So Julie is not sure yet exactly what she's gonna write about, but she has this epiphany and decides to write a story about her daughter's struggles, making it in the musical theater business. But she doesn't tell her daughter. So she's gonna kind of make it as a surprise for her daughter. She's gonna present it when she's all done. So all these conversations that Julie has, has with her daughter start becoming part of this musical that you see come to life on stage. Now, the husband, Max, is not into Julie writing a musical at all. He's, he's very frustrated. She's quit her job. He's very concerned. So the conflict between them starts to escalate throughout the show. We see this relationship start to uh, deteriorate because of her incredible commitment to doing the show and his resentment towards her incredible life change that he feels is not good for the family. So that's one of the conflicts that happen. And then what happens is that uh, her daughter, Samantha, finds out that she's writing a show about her life. And Samantha freaks out because she doesn't want her life public. She doesn't want her mother writing a story about her. You know, she's like, mom, write a story about yourself. Why are you writing about me? So Julie's whole world starts to fall apart. She's writing this musical. She's so excited about it. Her daughter's starting to freak out. Her husband's totally not supporting her doing it. So 
you know, I'll tell you the whole story, but she, you know, she decides to, she has to make this choice. Am I going to continue writing this musical and lose my relationship with my daughter? And I'm going to jeopardize my relationship with my husband over this, this musical. So that's really the question. And it, it's a really beautiful ending, which I'm not going to tell in case people can come to see the show. But, um, it, it's, it's interesting that you asked that question because it did evolve more into this is my story more than it is my daughter's story. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was great advice that she gave me. And again, she's, she's got a great eye and she's, she's probably going to be a director one of these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, again. But now it feels much more, it feels more, it feels more like my story. And it's very much based a lot on the life sucks book I did on my course, on my teachings, just using it, threading it through the family. Because one of the things I did shift last year, two years ago was I made my blog more about parenting you know, parenting at the speed of life more so than just, you know, transforming our crap into a holy shift. Because I realized that all my messages are about who we are as parents and how we evolve as people as parents and, and the struggles and the triumphs of being a parent. And again, that's what this show is really all about. It's about family. It's about parenting. It's about the individual versus the collective and how do we meld those two and bring them together so that we can all be, we can all follow our passion and purpose and, and support each other doing that. Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like a wonderful evolution. You're currently working with director, director Donna Drake, and music yes. ranger Alex Wise, yes. um, and dramedy, like comedy, but drama, so spelled E-D-Y at the end. So tell yes. us how, you know, I, I'm still not completely clear on, you know, you have a date, you're selling tickets now, correct? Yes, the event is going to be March 4th at 2 o'clock at the Center for Spiritual Living here in Morristown, New Jersey. And we pretty much have rented the venue and we're putting it together. And, um, you know, I've hired actors and sound people and um, you know, videographers and, you know, just putting on the whole, you know, I got one day, one day to make this shine. Right. So, um, and, and Don is just unbelievable, um, just an unbelievable support as a director, as a dramaturge. Um, incredible business person. I'm just very, very lucky to have her. She's been in this business for a long time. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to have her work with me. And Alex is just an amazing arranger. We've been working together since the beginning, about three and a half years ago. So I'm very blessed to have two very talented and uh, wonderful people in my, in my corner. So how, if, if there's a new playwright or aspiring screenwriter listening to this, uh, and I know that's different. Uh, I, I don't know the terms well enough, but I know screenwriter mm -hmm. would be for film and but screenwriter would be for film. Playwright, yeah. So um, how? So let's stick with the playwright because that's what you're working on. And without being too personal, if you uh, could share, what price range would someone need to save up for, so to speak, or you know, to be able to do, to to bring their own play to life, to hire their own actors? Oh so. God, I, I can't even answer that because everything's so different. I mean, you can work in a, with an arranger; they can charge you five hundred dollars an hour. $500 a song, they can charge you $20 an hour, 25. I mean, it just really depends on who you find to work with. Okay. And you know, that's one of the reasons why I do everything on my own because I couldn't find a book writer and I couldn't afford a book writer. So I ended up being a book writer, which is really cool because I love being a book writer Nice. and uh, I'm evidently really good at it. So it's, it's kind of cool that not finding this person actually helped me to step more into that, that talent too. Isn't it interesting? So, yeah, I can't, you know, and, and I've had, I've had the last three weeks, I've had some actors back out and it's been a little, that has been my biggest struggle um, is it's been a really excellent exercise for me though, to not freak out. It's been yeah. really an interesting where I just have to say, okay, I just need to, I just need to watch this, see what's happening, not react to it. And I've gotten people that are just wonderful. It's like everything is falling into place. So it's been a great lesson for me in terms of really becoming more, even more responsive and less reactive. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. And the universe is showing up. I'll tell you a real fun story real quick. Last Sunday I was setting up a table at the center and I'm selling tickets. This young woman comes up to me. She ends up being an, an actress who lives right in Morristown. Wow. Singer, sings, you know, a great singer. You know, she does a lot of New Jersey theater. Just delightful. The next day my lead actress has to back out of the show this is three weeks before the show so i call this young woman uh adrian who lives here in morristown i say we talk we, we schmooze i listen to her stuff she said and and she's now going to be my lead in the show wow like, the universe brought me this person exactly the day before <laughs> meanwhile i had this other woman hooked up for four weeks and you know she had to leave for legitimate reasons but 
you know, it's, it, it's just amazing to me. Yeah. So um, I just was, I'm just, I'm watching and observing more as opposed to stepping into the situations that come up. And, and that's so, a very interesting experience. Yeah. And that's so like the creative process yeah. because the more we're blocked, the more we miss the opportunities disguised as trouble, yeah. <laughs> uh, basically. Yeah. And the more you're just sort of like step back and just looking at things from like the bird's eye view, the director, you know, of your play, you can see, you know, you can see the drama unfolding, you can see it all happening in the next few pieces. And then you're in this flow of, all right, it's going to be fine. It's all going to work out because I know that this is going to happen. And I think, you know, you have to be fine too, even when it doesn't work out. That's really... Yeah. That's really the lesson, which is, you know, really hard for us as humans to grasp. Because like mm -hmm. for me, this is my big dream here. I've been working mm -hmm. on this for not just three and a half years, but most of my life trying to get to this place where I'm really stepping into who I am and how I want to show up in the world. So for me, for this show not to happen or not to take place, there's part of me that I don't want to even go there. But I've been learning too that, you know, I need to be able to step into that with grace as well. You know, I'm just doing everything that I can do. And I have to know that I'm doing everything humanly possible to make this happen. Yeah. But just really, you know, and I'm not, you know, it, it, it's a tough, again, it's a tough balancing act to say, oh, well, you know, I, I have to be graceful even if it doesn't happen. But you don't want to say it's not going to happen because then right, right. <laughs> you don't want it to not happen. Right. So, it, 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 you know, it's like a mind trick here. Yeah. But it, what I'm learning with this even more so, and even actually Jamie mentioned that to me too, he noticed that I was responding more to situations in a much more observatory, relaxed way than I have before, that it's been an evolution. He actually got more pissed off at things than I did. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this thing? <laughs> right. You know, so uh, I told him at one point that this actress, like, this, okay. he's like, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's okay, fine. And yeah. then he looked at me like, what, what's going on with you? What, what's, hap what's happening here? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask you, like, what, what were the biggest, like, uh, changes you experienced in going through this? And I think that's a really important lesson for that's so many creators because we're so tapped into our emotions so that we can create good work. And sometimes that can trip us up because we're, then we become over emotional about things that should probably just be like, no big deal necessarily but also just realizing that the more we create and the more we produce the more we step into the role of being in that flow like you were talking about the more you can just let it happen and be okay with whatever outcome and like you were saying before uh, realizing what roles you have to step up to or the people around you step up to yeah like finding people. I'm very good at finding people too. I've learned, I've learned how to pound the pavement and, and, and find people. And, and, you know, like for me, when I didn't have these actors, I don't have a theater. I don't have actors in my stable. I had to reach out to a lot of people and say, look, I'm looking for this. And then I lost another person. Look, I'm looking for this. And I just mm -hmm. had to, you know, I'm looking for a sound person now. And, you know, you just have to put yourself out there and Absolutely. just, you know, you know, really put yourself out there. Yeah. Um, and, and let people know what you're looking for. Sometimes we're afraid to do that, but I think that's very important too. Yeah. And to keep on going, you know, it's a fine line between knowing, you know, is it when to give up versus when to keep on going. Yeah. And I think that uh, if we don't feel like we've tried everything that we can, then we keep on going. If it's a yeah. really important mission to us, you know, so, so if it, when you say like, what if it doesn't work out? You know, like if it doesn't work out, it mean it may also just mean that it didn't work out this time. Mm -hmm. You know, and on um, to the next thing. And and yet back to your comment about book writer and other things is you know not just um, unfolding your own sense of self and confidence and sort of a stoicism relative to the upheavals and dramas in life. That's been part of the gift, which you can then pass on to others. But also, you've created quite a resume of things that you can do right. as a fallback in services mm -hmm. to others, you know, when you have time in between. So, you know, like you, you might on your website now put in like it, the thing that you love to do book writer. I don't know actually what that means when you say that relative to plays, but put that on your roster of things, services that you could offer. You never know. You might have someone contact you and you could do right. it for others. And if you're doing it for others, guess what? You're also making connections. Right. Exactly. I, I think too, as, as I'm talking and, and, 
we're, we're having this conversation, I'm realizing that I think it's very important to appreciate the moments that happen as opposed to just focusing on the end goal. Yes. Like, like this show is like the, this show is like, I'm preparing for all the, this show and, and that's what I keep thinking about. But there've been some really incredibly beautiful moments over the last three and a half years for me as I've been creating this. Mm. And I think it's when you, when you can kind of, you know, really, really appreciate those moments. It, it makes the end not, not that it's not important, but you know, you, you build a deeper sense of connection when you can really appreciate the moments. Like my relationship with my director, I am, I, I have just loved working with this woman or Alex, my arranger. I, I, I can just cry thinking about it. The moments when he sent a song back to me and I heard it for the first time and I was like, Oh my God. You know, I mean, I can look at these things and I think, you know, so much, so many of the times we try to show other people what we do and we try to need to be recognized for what we do. And, mm -hmm. And I think if you can sit back and really enjoy by yourself the things that you've created and accomplished, yeah. it, 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 it's, that, that's really for me when the joy happens. You know, I remember I ran a chorus at the center many, many years ago and it, amazing group of people. And we would have these couple of concerts, you know, we'd work up to these concerts and the concerts were beautiful, but it was those moments working up to the concerts and the connection and the time we spent together. That was really what really, you know, touched my heart. Yeah. It wasn't that one concert for two hours. It was just everything else that kind of led up to that. So that's what I'm really working to focus on as I do this experience is just really appreciating all the good things that are happening through it, the connections, how much, you know, the joy I feel as I'm doing things. Um, and I'm trying to focus more on that than just putting all my attention in the future in terms of, you know, that has to work in order for this to be great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Excellent. And in the end, life is not about the end. It is the journey. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. You know, it's the journey that makes the life. And so, yeah. you know, and the other part about that, that brings to mind something I meant to mention earlier when we were talking about the tasks that we also have to do in particular as creatives that may not be our specialty and that we may hate doing, not want to do, but we have to do, you know, and it's dishes. Like, I hate washing dishes. Exactly. It's like, uh -huh. it's like, it's and so then we do a lot of, and you do that with your shift attitudes, a lot of reframing. So it's like, yes. you know what, if you don't want to wash the dishes, but thank goodness we have the dishes to eat on. Thank goodness that, you know, that we, we had had water. and we were running water and we had food. Exactly. I mean, those yeah. things really, that gratitude mentality really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. And so it's like, I, I lost my thought right in the middle of it. <laughs> evaporated, evaporated. Moment. Forgetting in the moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So it, if it comes back, it comes back. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. So speaking of the the journey, enjoying the journey. But oh yeah, I remember. I was just going to say that the quote that kind of comes to mind is, "If you can't do what you love, then love what you do." Mm, you yeah, know, if you bring great. some love forward. We all have love within us. That's who we are. Yeah. And so we just have to find a way to express it wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever that yeah. is. For yeah. sure. Well, I agree. That's a great one. If you don't love what you do, then bring love. Say it again. Then bring love. So to if you can't do what you love, then love what you do. If you can't do what you love, then love what you do. Yeah. That's, that's we love what we, you know, and, and again, we're finding ways to do it by reframing, mm -hmm. you know, with gratitude, the attitude of gratitude makes a tremendous difference. Yes. So Allie, tell us who has inspired you in your journey through life in particular as a creative. You know, I was thinking, I, it's funny. I was thinking about that the other day. I haven't had a ton of mentors. Um, I get inspired by watching people do what they love to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, if I see someone talking about their, if talking about, like if I see Marianne Williamson talking, she inspires me. Or if I see, um, you know, an, an incredible performance by a musician or like dancing with the stars, when I see these dancers sometimes that inspires me. So I don't have mentors as much as I get inspired by watching people just really step into their power, step into their truth, yeah. you know, and just express it. So I would have to say I, more inspiration from various places all over the place than just one or two mentors. I would say, um, you know, right now my director has been an incredible mentor for me. Um, 
I would say Barbara at the Women's Theater Company, her support has, has made so much to me. She's been a mentor. She turns me on to different things and advises me. And, and I've really enjoyed having her, um, you know, open up my world in terms of the business part, too, of, of, of putting on a show. Um, let me think who else. Um, my kids inspire me. My kids inspire me a lot. My daughter's a musical theater performer, and it's one of the hardest jobs in the world to manage. Mm. And I watch her with her courage and her dedication and her commitment and the challenge of every other day not knowing sometimes what's, what's going to happen or where you're going to work or sometimes not being able to do what you love to do because you have, you were waiting for someone else to give you a job and she's got to do jobs she doesn't like to do just to support herself. So, um, and, and her drive. And I would say she inspires me and she's, she's a lot of my inspiration for what I've been writing too. Um, my musical is based on, you know, my relationship with her, my relationship with my son, um, and, and not exactly our relationship, but it's, it's based on that connection. Right. So I would have to say my kids, my husband, uh, who's another creative who, you know, we're all out on the fringe. Yeah. You know, we're all out on the fringe, you know, stepping out into the unknown. And I have a lot of respect for people who do that. So I would definitely say that those are the kind of people too that inspire. My son who's doing electronic music. I mean, he's out there in California at 18, living on his own, trying to make his way, meeting with you know people and making business contacts and working. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's really amazing to watch. So more inspired by people than mentors per se. Yeah, no, I love that. It reminds me of the quote by Howard Thurman that I'm sure most people are familiar with that says, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that because mm. what the world needs is people who have come alive. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's, That's what inspires when we see someone. You are like the queen of quotes. <laughs> you come up yeah. with, I'm telling you. Sure well, and I also love, and I have to find the name of the book and I apologize. I don't have it right now. I think her name is Christine Berend. I, I was reading her book in one of the, in a course I was taking. And she said, and I'm not going to say it exactly right, but the thought was, if the universe or God gives you a thought, then why wouldn't you have the tools and be given the opportunities to manifest that thought or that creative mm -hmm. idea? Like if, it, if an idea comes to you, right. yeah, then right. why would the universe somehow give you the opportunity to make that come become real? So that's what I kind of keep hanging on to when the you know, the, the, the bricks or not the bricks, but the, uh, what are they called? Not stepping stones, the blocks or whatever, get in your way. And you're like, you know, now what? Or yeah. Yeah. Obstacles. Thank you very much. That's what I need. You know, when the obstacles come up, I keep thinking, well, I was given this idea and, and I've been doing this now for so many years. This, this needs, it, it's got to manifest somehow. I just have to be patient. Yeah, absolutely. it gets back to the book. I forget the guy's name, but he wrote the book. Literally the obstacle is the way, and it's not about, um, yeah. sidestepping the obstacles. It's, it's really about uh, stepping into the obstacle, yeah, <laughs> going through the obstacle, Ryan holiday. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with that one, Allie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely recommend you read that. Okay, good, great. Perfect timing for and that. it's a great title too. The obstacle is the way like you, those, and like you were talking about enjoying the moments on the journey, the good and the bad moments, because that's what makes the end experience, the full rich production, you know, a creation is just building who you need to be to create the masterpiece while you're creating the masterpiece. And all the that's lessons. A great, that's a great line that you're building who you need to be in order to build the masterpiece. I, I've really been feeling that with this experience more than ever. And one of the things a coach once said to me was that, you know, obstacles can also be seen as stepping stones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they also, mm -hmm. you know, you see what you're made of. And there's yeah. been creative solutions that I've come up with things that I never would have known that I was able to do if that obstacle hadn't, you know, come, mm -hmm. come to me in that way. So, I mean, as much as they're not always fun, if you can approach it with like, okay, this is just another thing that's coming up to pull something out of me that I haven't experienced yet or show me a bigger part of myself that I'm just not aware of. Yeah. That kind of helps too. Definitely. So you mentioned, was it Christine? Do you know, remember what her last name is? It's Berend. I can look it up. B-E-H-R-E-N-D. Oh God, what is the name of that? Do you want to look it up real quick for you? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now, Christine. I think it's Berend. B-E-H-R. I'm not remember if her name is Christine or, hang on. Oh, I just lost you. Oh, oh crap. We, we see you. That's okay. I think we're behind. Can you hear, can you hear me? 
Um, let me see. Okay. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I thought I lost you. Hang on. Let me just see yeah, if I can okay, find it. Behind the um, Berend. I think it's Christine Berend. If I don't, if I can't find it right now, I'll, yeah, I'll look for you on. Uh, I think I found it. So the emerging rituals. Would that be it? Nope. Nope. Okay. I think okay. I have the wrong name. Okay, that's fine. So we'll we'll get it from you and add it to the show notes. Would that be the book that you would recommend, or is there another book you would like to recommend? No, I like that book a lot. It's a small little book. It she wrote it, I think, in the nineteen early nineteen hundreds or something. But just really cool, really cool book. Awesome. Really cool, book. easy reading. And yeah. I remember both. I was reading it, and then of course I always turned Jamie on to stuff, and he's like, "Whoa, this is such a great book." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a PDF you can get online too for free. So I'll, okay. I'll find that for you when we get off and I'll, I'll send that to you. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Thanks. So in closing, you've shared so many awesome uh, bits of advice and wisdom and just your journey is amazing. And so in closing, what would you like to tell people? What would you like to part any uh, listeners <laughs> with? <laughs> I think we're all creatives in one way or another. And I think our society hasn't really, in a lot of ways, encouraged that part of who we are as, as humans. I think it's all about safety and security and all these other things. And um, I just want to say that I don't think any, I, I think everybody is a creative. I don't just think there's one group of people that are creative. So I think everybody can be creative in their own way and not to like, you know, you can be a very creative parent. You know, you can be a very creative uh, accountant you know, with math, it doesn't just have to be the arts. So mm -hmm. I think if we start, it would be nice if we could start all seeing ourselves as creatives mm -hmm. um, and, and just tapping into that, to tapping that into that energy. So Wonderful. that's my closing statement. Yeah, that's excellent. That's a great one. Perfect for a show like I Create Daily. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Allie, for taking the time and sharing it with us, sharing your journey with us. And we look forward to following what's next for you and your amazing play and brand. The play, again, is Life Sucks, Just Kidding. And we'll link to your site that also will have information on your shiftitudes as well. Great. Uh, so if they go to the site, they can actually download the Shiftitudes book as a free uh, giveaway. And you have this from Sucky to Soulful, right? Yes, it's on the Sucky to Soulful site, which is my okay. blogging site. My okay. first so your book is not titled Suc Sucky to Soulful, uh, but that is your site name, correct? The site name is Sucky to Soulful, and I have books of different titles. I have the Shiftitudes book. I have the Transforming Our Crap into a Holy Shift book. Mm -hmm. um, I have My Life Sucks Just Kidding. So there's different books with you know, which can sometimes be a little confusing, but it's all about, to me, it's all about turning the sucky into the soulful, everything. Awesome. Well, Love you're doing it. a great job of that. Thanks so much. Thank Emily. you. Okay. Bye. Take care. You too. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.